Hello, welcome back to another Lifting and Life Lessons with your girl, Donna Gift. You gotta be your own hype woman. If you're not your own hype woman, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm in much better spirits from the last time you guys have seen me on my Lifting and Life Lessons series. Things are starting to lift. I'm just kidding. No, but really, things are starting to get a little bit better. As far as finances, literally the day after Dylan and I had a super heart to heart connection where we, where he really just let me kind of share what was going on in my mind and like how I was hurting and, and all of that. He held space really, really well. And because of him setting the tone of just a grounding space for me to basically vent and allow me to express my frustrations, we had a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. We had a beautiful connection. And then literally, I think like we didn't even like, we didn't fully complete the conversation, but he had to go because he had a sales call. And he closed the client and finances are much better now for a month at least. <laughs> That's kind of the way entrepreneurship works is sometimes you go barren for a couple months and then maybe not even a couple months, maybe you go barren for like a month and you lock a client in. Luckily for Dylan, his clients are more high ticket. So one client for him is like a month working for me creating content, which I'm just really, really proud of him and excited to hopefully just breathe a little bit. You know, I'm not, not saying that everything is going to be perfect um, financially just yet because we have a lot of things that we are working towards but one of them being marriage just super excited it's just nice to breathe for a second and i think part of the lesson that i am quickly quickly learning is that god is asking me to have full faith and trust in him i have consistently shown up in this area and this space and entrepreneurship and like consistently took the leap of faith, right? And so for me to basically back down on it, not back down on it, but question it now, it's almost like I feel God saying, I freaking told you so. <laughs> like, like I'm telling you, you will continue to experience this until you learn that I am the protector and th the provider. Like I am your savior until you can submit to that and stop worrying about the trivial things of this world, you're going to keep experiencing it. And so I felt that I felt that in my core. Also, I wanted to share with you guys part of what I don't know. This is, this is a camera stand. <laughs> I wanted to read to you guys part of what I wrote down the other day that I felt God was saying to me. I'm going to read it to you guys because I think it's beautiful. And I felt like it was a divine message, if you will. I wrote in my journal. <clears throat> I feel like God has been telling me to slow down, to stop and rejoice in the suffering and fall in love with the process for it brings me closer to him. He's saying, I need you to deepen your relationship with me because the next level I'm guiding you to is going to require you to be near me. You will need me. I will protect you from the fires that burn outside. For if you don't want to be consumed by the darkness of the world, you must find your strength in the sun. And the sun could be seen as the S-U-N, but I see it as Jesus, the sun. But it's still like very beautiful because if you think of it, if, if you interchange S-U-N and S-O-N, it's still the energy of God and the essence of God, right? So... I, I just wanted to share with that, share that with you guys, because I feel like there are many times where we get faced up with these challenges and we think that we have to handle it all on our own and, and we worry and we wrap and we spiral basically, right? We, we get stuck in this like dark loop of a story that we cannot let go of. And sometimes those moments of darkness is God's way of showing you that he's there, right? Not to say that God is the darkness and, and is causing that in your life. There's things like outside spiritual forces and the devil and attacks. There is definitely spiritual warfare going on in the world. Like 
Just like you can't see electricity, but it still exists, right? Just like you can't see gravity, it still exists. Same thing with spiritual warfare. There is absolutely things that exist that we cannot humanly see. And so I just wanted to share with you guys, because I think that there are moments where we are brought down low so that we can be lifted up high by his spirit and his promise. So <laughs> yes, in <laughs> Dylan just got back from his workout. I'm about to leave to mine. Um, you just going to yours? Yeah, I had stuff to do. Ah. You know, I got the lashes on. I made some TikTok videos and the things. Dylan's, right. Dylan's been checking out my workout off. It's a little bit more showy than I have been lately. But luckily we have a private gym, so. That's true. Yeah. Which you're going to bring YouTube there with you. <laughs> I'm bringing YouTube. So yeah, anyways, guys, that is all. That is all. All right, let me get my workout in. First off, I got to pack. And I don't even know what I'm working out today. I, I, I probably yes. should, yeah. I should do legs, but I already did legs on the last list, lifting and life lessons. No, wait, no, I did, I did hit training, Never mind. I only lift two days a week, okay? Don't yell at me. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Clearly. Okay. Let me prepare myself, get some water. This water bottle takes forever. Okay. Let me go and get this shit in. Got to get my creatine gummies. I don't know if you guys know this, but everything is coming in gummy form and I I'm living for it. I got these, it's too tall, I have to use my little stool. I got these creatine bites from TikTok shop, obviously, everything's from TikTok shop at this point. They are so stinking good, they're dangerous, honestly, and I, I don't fully sometimes eat them just for the creatine. I mostly eat them because I just like the taste, but we're doing leg day, so it makes sense, I'm gonna do it. My legs are I'm gonna <coughs> Why are you looking at me like that? I need you to get back home immediately. Dylan's been trying to rip off my clothes since this morning. <laughs> He's going to our delicious. Since September 28, 2021. What's the day we got together, huh? Where we met. The day we met and hung out? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> That actually wasn't my intention that day. Mm-hmm. He says, I need to go to the gym because we got a photo shoot here at 10. All right, I'm off to the races. Here we go. Off to the gym. Bring my water bottle. And we are Gucci Gucci Katucci. Okay, bye baby, I love you. See you later. Oh, actually. <laughs> I just, just gotta put my ring. Ah! Dylan's pooping. <laughs> Love you. you too. Phone. Phone is in there. Okay, I need that. Gotta make it within reach here. Oh! Check out today's fit too, you guys. We got the we got the all pink fit, pink headphones, pink uh, outfit. <laughs> it's just cute. Um, it's a little maybe should have went a medium, but the only reason why I wish I would have went medium is because the boobs they're like they're suffocating in there. But it's all good. So cute. Okay, let's go came across some people in the elevator and I still feel weird filming in public, which I, I'm working my way up to the courage again. I feel like there has just been a lot of life lessons in this last month. And like I was saying, I think that these lessons can really be golden lessons depending on your viewpoint, right? Your perspective, how you decide to take what has been given to you and turn it into for good. A lot of the times people feel like these types of things are 
you know, woe is me and the world is against them and yada yada. And yeah, you can see it as that. It makes sense to feel like that. But at the end of the day, if you look at all of the things that fell into place or fell out of place so that you can fall into place, kind of a blessing. I mean, let's think about it. The relationship that you wanted to work out didn't work out. What would have happened if it did? Maybe it has been sucking. Maybe they were abusive. Maybe you were seeking something more exciting and he cheated on you or something, or she did, whatever. Sometimes that can be seen as like, you know, that, that sucks, it's a negative thing, but at the end of the day, that's, that's God's protection, right? He's like, sometimes I'll have to deliver things in such a harsh way because we won't move otherwise. You know what I haven't done in a long time? And I think it's just because I haven't been wanting to hurt my back. I haven't done squats in a while. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do some squats. We're gonna have to move this first. Dang, this thing is just short enough where I'm gonna have to move it. Oh, no, actually, you know what? Nah, I can make that work. I'm just lazy, don't, don't judge me. Let's start off with some tens while I warm up. All right, let's play a little bit of lo-fi. Oh wait, there's beast mode hip hop. This might be more of my mood right now. I'm vanilla, baby. Oh, that's gonna destroy my phone. Yeah, I don't know how my phone survives all of these drops. I do not take good enough care of it, but it's working somehow. Okay, let me put this over here. Y'all, I haven't done. Let me just do some practice squats because it's been a minute since I've done some squats. And I also should do this barefoot. The reason why I do it barefoot, by the way, guys, is because this is my natural balance that's going to autocorrect itself when you don't have the shoes. When you have the shoes, there's a little bit too much padding and it can throw off your balance, your natural balance. So that's why I do it. It's also just nice to have that firm grip, you know? Okay. As I've mentioned before, always do a nice little warm up, especially for leg day. I should have went size medium on this entire outfit because it's, we're pushing it. All right, we're gonna try these with the bar, with the 10 pounds. Why am I nervous? <laughs> I used to lift so much heavier than this and now I'm like, <sighs> I just realized I'm gonna have to do this up here. That's fine. I feel like I've kind of been in this same cycle of just learning to deal with challenges and frustrations. I want to talk about the process of like breakups because I feel like, well, one of my girlfriends came out to visit this, this past weekend and she came over because she's experiencing a breakup and she moved all the way to a whole new city for this guy. I mean, not strictly for this guy. She's got like family and stuff. So there was other reasons, but like a big part of that move was because of this guy. Now they had, they had plans. Okay. They were going to be getting married and it was this entire thing, and I don't want to get too deep into the weeds with it because it's not my story to tell. But essentially, somewhere down the line, after I don't know how long of actually dating, there was a flip that switched. A switch that flipped. Switch that flipped? Yeah, switch that flipped. And I'm still just doing a warm up. And suddenly, 
they are no longer to be married they are broken up and the way in which it's being handled the breakup is honestly kind of harsh on his end from my perspective right? i don't know what's actually going on but from what i can see and from his response to certain things he's very like cold cold-hearted and it just got me to think thinking about god's protection right like as much as i'm sure she loved this man sometimes we allow people or things into our life because we are needing to learn a specific lesson before God can actually give us our gift, like the full gift that he wants to give us. Because, oh, nine. pretty sure my form is good on this because it feels better. All right. I'm like, do I tack on another? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so let's do just another 10. This is probably, probably the most I'm gonna do this weight wise because like I said, I haven't done squats in a while. The last thing I wanna do is hurt myself and suddenly I cannot lift anymore. Where is my lifting belt? Dang, okay. Well, you know what, if I need that, then I probably shouldn't be doing any heavier. <laughs> so let's try this. Oh. Okay, so as I was saying, I feel like God protects us in very interesting ways. Now that I even think about it, when I first started leaning into my faith and trying to understand God and like all of that. I was like a fresh slate, right? I came from a Catholic background, was super traumatized, hated everything about that, felt like I didn't belong, was rejected multiple times. And so I left. And then when I started to come back into Christianity or like learn about what Christian faith was and God, it was like five years ago. And to be honest, <laughs> I got involved in like this more of like a cult-like energy of like Christians claiming that they were Christians but not practicing the Christian love. It was like during our Bible studies they would spend it just criticizing everybody else and criticizing everyone's sins and like it was just this whole thing and I'm like really? I felt like there were moments where I, in some ways, like shut the door on some of my friends who were living a sinful life, like as if I was fucking perfect. And it caused me a lot of conflict because it felt like, felt like whatever I was getting involved into didn't feel like love. It felt more, ooh, like judgment than anything else and this is kind of like I'm gonna tie this all in together I promise <laughs> one more slow and steady okay okay as I was saying during that time because of the conflict that it's caused me and like the relationships that had to be lost it actually caused me to question a lot of what God is and like made me question what where I would what I was getting involved in I'm like is it really God's love to be criticizing and judging people to the point where they feel unwelcomed and turning them to, to cause from their faith. So I didn't believe that. And so I actually ended up straying away from all of it and went more of the 
the spiritual route, like the spiritual woo-woo side of things, like mushrooms and ayahuasca journeys and, and you know, Reiki and like all of that. That's kind of where I was in, like self-development, but spiritual self-development, you know what I mean? So I was saying, I feel like in his own way and like a very unique way, I was turned away from that style of faith and instead learned about like self-love and compassion and had to learn those lessons through a method that might have seemed simple. Like, if you look at it from an outside perspective, if you're like, if all you know is Christian faith and you've never dove into anything else, then you would absolutely think that what I was doing was like the devil, <laughs> basically. But I don't see it that way. I see it as God's like way of correcting me in a way that only I could, could have received it. And I don't think he wanted me to become a judgy Christian. I, I think he wanted me to become and be more well-rounded and more, let's say, accepting of people and meeting them where they're at. Cause that's, that's how Jesus was, right? Like just because people appear sinful from the outside perspective, he consistently chose to meet people with mercy and grace and love and compassion. And if you're a Christian and you're not practicing love above everything else like <laughs> that was like the number one uh commandment that god wanted for us so yikes oh it's been a minute I think we're done with squats for now. <laughs> Let's go do Bavarian split squats. Alright. Do a little warm up with this. We can go. Wow, these like these are super stretchy, but my god, they ride up. Alright. So. So anyways, back to my main lesson here that I was trying to speak on is God's protection. Like, even though the way that my friend and her boyfriend broke up felt very harsh and brutal, I feel like that was the only way that she would stop turning back to this man. Like, he literally had to be so cold for her to be able to turn the other cheek and like I said it's all perspective right like you can look at that and just feel like he was an asshole she didn't deserve that yada yada but that doesn't that story let me sit down for a second because I'm dying <laughs> that story doesn't actually serve anyone right like all it does if you are say for example you're the one in that story the woman in that story it doesn't serve you to be angry and bitter towards that relationship this is where like learning how to be detached and learning to to be able to accept the things that are not for you and allow them to be let go and like the reason why we get so stuck up on these ideas of what our life should be is because we are, we go through this life period where we are so self-sufficient, right? We go, through, this is how like the stages of, I guess, aging kind of work. We go from being extremely dependent as infants, babies, we need our parents, they guide us, they, they start to teach us their ways subliminally we're getting programmed from the beginning right 
um, according to our environment. And then we reach a point of our own level of consciousness where we're able to ask questions and then kind of decide what works for us, what doesn't work for us. Then we go through the stage because a pendulum loves to swing one side or the other. We love to explore the extremities of something, right? Because we think the world is black and white, but it's not, it's colorful. <laughs> so we go through the stage of basically a hyper-independence and we start to we start to develop for ourselves and realize for ourselves that like if we're not able to secure something ourselves that it's like that it's like all on us and that we have we we develop this like scarcity mindset around it all five four, six seven eight i hope that was eight sometimes i can't count I'm Asian, but I suck at math. Okay, anyways, <laughs> that's just counting. It's not even math. Okay, one, two, three, I'm falling. Four, five, six. It's like, I'm like dying a little bit. We just develop this thing, especially if you're somebody who has had an interesting past, I'll say a colorful past, where you basically had to take things into your own hands if you ever wanted anything done. If you grew up with parents who were not emotionally available, they were absent, like physically absent, they uh, like diminished your emotions, your opinions, they saw lordship over you. They thought they would say things like, I'm the parent and you're the child and that's just the way things are. Like, when we feel that sense of obedience without reasoning and they don't show it for us emotionally, intelligently, physically, sometimes we take it upon ourselves to take control of a situation so that we can feel more secure and safe. And then when we find that level of independence, we're like, oh wait, I can give myself emotional security, dependency, spiritual um, wellness, like I can get myself all of that. And we think that because everything else and every other person is like outside of our control, we seek to, we have the scarcity around it that the people who do relate to us on another level and are loving enough to adjust some things in their life we we kind of latch on to them and then in some ways maybe subconsciously try to control them and and, and it's not in a negative way like we, we try to control them because we don't want to lose them because we love them and we think that because we've made it however far in our journey that our way is the right way and that's just wrong <laughs> like our way will never be the right way for somebody else. Like everybody's journey is so uniquely different. Even if I gave you the recipe to everything I do in life, believe me, you will not follow it verbatim. You will not follow it step by step and you will not have the same results and outcome because no matter what, your story is always gonna be different from my story. And so all that to say is just that we, we have this tendency to think that the more we control, the more we're not going to lose that person. And then the more they allow us to control different aspects of their life, we almost kind of get spoiled in it. And so when they fight back, we're like, wait a second, this is so unlike you. And then we latch on even tighter because we have this scarcity around love. We feel like, you know, who, when am I gonna find another person who treats me the way that he does or she does and all of that. And then, it ends up pushing them away even further. Like, the thing with this is that we need to understand is energy, right? Like, you will, you will get what you give out. So if you are giving out scarcity and you're basically feeling like everything like you're worried about losing things and so you wrap your fingers around everything you can to control but you're still operating in a space of 
scarcity, you're not doing it out of love, you're gonna receive that energy back. You're gonna receive stuff that makes you actually scarce in it. And so, I'm almost done here. So I'm not gonna go heavy today. I have, I'm about to start my period next, the next couple days. So uh, I don't wanna be pushing myself too much because I cycle sync. If you guys are curious about cycle syncing, let me know in the comments. I'm more than happy to talk about that the next lifting and life lessons, but yeah, <laughs> that's a whole different story. So anyways, like I was saying, you will, you will get what you give out. The energy you put out is what you will receive. So if you feel like, and I'm saying this because that's something I need to preach to myself, right? <laughs> like when I am feeling scarce and money and I'm feeling uptight and I feel like I need to start making more, working more, doing more, that's when I'm gonna be met with a forced amount of finances mean to say I work and scratch for every single penny and it's still never going to be enough because that's the energy in which I'm operating. Now, if I can flip the script in my head, if I could get my mind under enough control to where I can paraphrase or rephrase these stories that are playing in my head, then I can finally come into a place where I can earn money and it can come to me in such an easy and generous way that I am full of love and abundance when I receive it. And I don't have to work extremely hard. I don't have to, you know, fight for every single penny. Instead, it'll just flow to me because I'm exuding love and abundance and that positive energy. <sighs> I don't want to. and I got things to do. I am so grateful for the path that God has sent me down. Even though the path may seem sinful to a lot of people, right? You look at me and you're like, oh my gosh, she used to take very provocative photos when she was a fitness competitor. Or you look at my past and are like, she did an ayahuasca journey. And you're probably thinking like, if you're deep in a Christian faith, you're probably like, that's, that's not from God and like all of these things. But I am so grateful that I went through these seemingly sinful things, right? I do, I do this because it's like, it's sinful to the flesh, but God absolutely still loves and adores me and is patient with me. I'm so grateful that I was brought through these, through the spiritual woo-woo side, because if I didn't, I wouldn't have had as much compassion and love for other people's journey. And I, And I wouldn't understand energy on the level that I need to understand it with. Because I'm telling you, like, dang, where's my thing? I must have took all this stuff out. That's unfortunate. I don't know how I'm gonna, it's gonna hurt. Is there a, I'm trying to see if there's like a cushion or a pad, but I don't see one. And that sucks, because I have mine upstairs. Okay, whatever. Let's just stick to a light, light game here. So, I just think that God isn't, God isn't as black and white as we like to believe he is. I think because we want to believe that he's black and white and that like the answers he gives is gonna be so clear and it's gonna be like feeling from God, but like we forget that we are also dealing with our own human tendencies and beliefs and morals and like cap capabilities, right? Like we think 
like a human because that's all we know. <laughs> like that's, we are, we are only capable of thinking like humans. And so for us to sit here and try and tell one person what God wanted for them in their journey, and you're not God yourself, like, oh my gosh, it's not gonna work, oh, fuck. <laughs> I wonder if this will work a little bit better. Eh, I just don't want to hurt my pelvis. Okay. <laughs> well, it already hurts. I don't know. I'm just going to have to support it with my hands. So for us to sit here and pretend like we know the right recipe and to condemn others for their unique path. Like, I don't think that that's what God wanted for us. This is just from what I understand. Obviously, take it with a grain of salt. You have your own journey. And I'm not gonna sit here and criticize you and tell you that you're wrong when your journey is unique to you. And like, some things can be said to me in one ear, out the other, and you might receive that same message and get a ton of gold nuggets from it and vice versa right because sometimes i mean we're just like all of us have our own unique gifts right like i make content and that's like what i love and i do and to me it feels very natural and effortless at this point and to someone else it's like the worst thing you can make them do so again appreciate your uniqueness and the journey and like stop turning people away from god just because you think you know what god wants because he spoke to you in a different way that shit pisses me off sorry i'm cussing it's painful i need a little belt what a thing Oh, it hurts to sit. That's how I know it's working. Okay, I could probably do 10 more, if I'm being super honest. <sighs> I used to be able to do the 245 plates on this thing. No problem. Like three sets of 12. And now I'm like, I got 20, 40, 60, like 65 pounds total with the bar and this is pushing me but it's okay i'm going nice slow and controlled so <sighs> my body is learning how to lift again <sighs> yeah guys i think i'm gonna spend the rest of the day kind of really just learning to appreciate the different journeys we are all on and like really learning and appreciating how different we are in a sense that if we were all the same imagine what would not get done <laughs> imagine like how horrible this world will be if we had a million of me's running around or a million of you's running around and like everybody was exactly the same which is why i don't love like you know all of the copy paste faces that we seem to be doing and this is nothing against like people getting surgery obviously i've got my boobs done it's like clear but for people to like shift their face and kind of do like basically a copy paste of you know the big juicy lips and the high cheekbones and the raised eyebrows like everybody's starting to look the same like they're beautiful but like let's learn to appreciate the uniqueness and the differences that God gave us instead of trying to get everybody to conform to a certain way of living a certain style of thinking like it's not up for you to decide five <laughs> six seven oh that one hurt okay we're done that's oh, ow. ow 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 it like hurts to sit on my butt okay I'm just gonna wrap up with some ab work 
and basically just finished because I got I got a long film day. I'm gonna go help Dylan go do a photo shoot. I also got to do one because we have a speaking engagement, um, a speaking gig coming up this weekend, and so I want to make sure that we are prepared. We got to send in our bios, our photos, and all of that stuff. So. I don't want to get too crazy long here at the gym, but as always, thank you for tuning in to another Lifting and Life Lessons. I am Donna Gift. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. It helps me so much more than I can even express through this camera. I hope you can feel what I'm saying when you like and subscribe, the support I feel from you who decide to view me, you who decide to support me is incomprehensible like I can't even explain how much it actually means to me I actually keep a folder of screenshots of all of the kind things that I've received from creating content over the past 10 years y'all I've been doing this for 10 years <laughs> on and off right but I, I've been going like straight nothing but content for the past four years and if you know me and have followed me through that journey you'll know that I have changed a lot throughout the years. You'll see me from my flight attendant journey is when I decided I wanted to go full all in to shifting into relationship coaching and like just a bunch of other things. And all that to say is that this has been a crazy journey um, of a contentpreneur, contentpreneur. <laughs> and um, I'm just now getting to a place where I'm actually getting consistent income from social media and I know it might not mean much to you who don't really know me but to be doing something for so long and not getting paid for it and having to like do other gigs and like it's like it is just so humbling and such an honor that you choose to spend your time with me. And so I just really, really wanted to emphasize my love and gratitude for the people who have decided to support me. And so if you are one of those people today, and maybe you just discovered me, please like, subscribe, and help me grow. Like, I think I do believe in a world where there is enough abundance and energy, love, money, all of it is available for anybody who is willing to lead with those things first and I just I know that that energy is going to be given back to you someday and it creates a ripple effect love causes a ripple effect so if you decide to love up on me thank you I promise that will always be paid forward on my end as I do and I hope you guys have a beautiful beautiful day and I'll talk to you later I love you goodbye